Number one, which of the following constructions would help to construct a line passing through point C that is perpendicular to line AB? So construct an equilateral triangle that has one side length of AB, so something like this. So would we want to const and construct it, not just draw it, but would that help us get a perpendicular line through C? No. Um, construct a hexagon, one side, which is BC. That would not help us get a perpendicular line through there. Um, construct a perpendicular bisector that would go through C. Yes. Um, construct a square with side lengths AB. So if I just kind of look at what that would look like, I mean, that's a terrible drawing, but something like that, not going to help us. So C is the answer, getting a perpendicular line, um, a perpendicular bisector through C, which is why when we do this construction, um, you are first, let me see, first just um, drawing a little arc here so that you can find two points that are equidistant from C. And then you're creating the perpendicular bisector of that newly formed segment. So this intersection point and this intersection point, if we construct the perpendicular bisector of that, it would go right through C. Number two, two distinct lines, L and M, are each perpendicular to the same line, N. So let's draw this out so we can kind of look at it because then they're going to ask us questions about this. So line N, I'll just draw um, in orange here. So there's line N. Then let's go ahead um, and draw line L and M. So they're both going to be perpendicular to this line. So I will draw one of them in green. So let's um, draw perpendicular. So we need to get a right angle. So that needs to be a 90 degree angle there. And I will call this one um, L. So line L we'll do in green. And then we'll do line M, um, which also needs to be perpendicular to N in blue. All right, so we've got 90 degree angles here. So we know that these two lines are perpendicular to N. So then let's answer these questions. So our line L and M, so are the green and the blue perpendicular to each other? No, they need to cross at a 90 degree angle and they're not touching each other. Our lines L and N, so the green and the orange, are they perpendicular? Yes. Our M, and N perpendicular, blue and orange, yes, they meet at a 90 degree angle. Are L and M, the green and blue, parallel? And that is true. If they're perpendicular to the same line, then they're gonna be parallel, they're never gonna cross. Are L and N, the green and orange, parallel? No, because they're touching each other. Are M and N, blue and orange, are they parallel? Again, no, because they're touching each other. Number three in this diagram, we have straight edge and compass constructions of the angle bisector of um, BAC. So let me draw in that angle here quick, just so we can kind of see it. So here's the angle that's being bisected. And they want us to explain the steps um, for the construction in order. So um, number one, we're going to create this circle around A and it can be any size. So create a circle centered at A with any radius. Then the second step after you've created that circle is to label the intersections with the green angle, okay? So label the intersection of circle A with intersections of circle A and angle 
um, B, A, C. And in this case, B was the intersection. Um, so we didn't have to, that was already labeled. But we'll say label the intersections of that B and D. Um, so now you've got B and D here. So now we're going to create these other two circles. So draw um, a circle centered at B with radius BD. So you're going to have the radius be the width. So we're going to draw a circle around B that goes through D. And then we're going to do it again around D. So draw a circle centered oops, at D with radius BD. So that these two circles in step three and four are the same size. So I'm just going to move this up here. Then after we've created those, drawn those two circles, then we want to label their intersections. So label the intersections of circle B and circle B as E and F. So we just label those intersection points as E and F. And finally, um, draw a line through points E and F. So you're just going to put your straight edge down and then extend a line that goes through E and F, and then that will be the angle bisector. Number four, um, in this straight edge and compass construction, we've got a line perpendicular to AB passing through C. So we had this line with a point on it, and we created a perpendicular line through it. Which segment has the same length as EF. So let me underline what's important here. So which segment has the same length as EA? I think I said EF first. So EA, we would just connect those. So which segment has the same length as that one? So let's look at EC. So EC is not a radius. Well, yeah, not a radius of that circle. So that's not true. Whoops. ED, okay, that is a radius. It goes center out to edge. And so that is the same length because these two bigger circles are the same size. So ED would have the same length as EA. So we can just check just to be sure, but would BE have the same length? No, because B is not the center. And would BD have the same length? We've got the center, but B isn't on the edge of the circle. Number five, this diagram is a straight edge and compass construction. Which triangle that's shaded is equilateral and how do you know? So remember equilateral means all the sides need to be the same length. So if we look, we're pretty sure it's this one because these all look like they're the same length where this SU looks pretty, um, looks longer than the others. And so this is the equilateral triangle, but how do we know? Okay, so oops, let me get this. So we know triangle ZVW is equilateral. Because each of the sides is a diameter. So if we look here, it goes from this edge of the circle to this edge through the center. VW connects center connects edge to edge on this circle through the center. So it's a diameter. And V or sorry, WZ is from this circle here and is a diameter going through the center. So that means they're all going to be the same size. So we know triangle ZWV is equilateral because each of the sides is formed by a diameter of congruent circles. So that means they're the same size. In this construction, A is the center of one circle, B is the center of the other. 
name the segments in the diagram that have the same length as AB. So here's AB. What other segments have the same length as AB? So AB is a radius. So any other radius is going to have the same length. So AC, center A to edge C, um, BC. So center at B, out to the edge at C. We also have B to D, and we have A to D. So each of these segments, let me draw them in here. So this one, this one, this one, and this one. Number seven, um, in this straight edge and compass construction, A is the center of one circle, B is the center of the other. Name any pair of perpendicular segments. So in this diagram, let me just highlight the two um, perpendicular segments. So we've got AB is perpendicular to this one. So if we use any two letters on the orange segment and then any two letters on the blue segment, you would be correct. Um, so we can say it AB if you want to just use the whole segment. So AB is perpendicular to... CD, that would be fine. Okay, other ways that you could have said it a couple other ways would be you could have said AM and CM. So you could use a partial orange segment. So just A to M is perpendicular to CM or MD or CD, kind of however you wanted to say that. So there's a bunch of different ways you could say it, but it needs to be the orange and the blue. And then name a pair of line segments with the same length. So again, there's quite a few up here that you could say. Um, so we know that M is the midpoint since CD is the bisector of AB. So we know that AM is equal to MB. Now we don't know about the blue segment being split up. So one thing that we cannot say, so one of the ones that you cannot have written down would be um, CM is equal to MD. We do not know this. So we can't say that one. Um, but you could use any of the segments that are connecting the center to the edge. So all of these next segments are equal. So AC is equal to CB is equal to um, BD is equal to AD. So all of those segments are um, congruent to each other. So that's gonna be these ones right here. So any two of those you could have used as well. All right, then number eight says that we've got these points A, B, and C are the centers of the circle. Select all segments that are congruent to AB. So we're looking for congruent to AB which is um, a radius of one of these circles. So if you kind of look at this, let me draw it on here. So this radius of this circle, um, or you could look at it as the radius of this circle. And all three of those circles are gonna be the same size. So let's take a look here. So HF, that's a diameter, that's two radii, so that's not gonna be equal to it. HA, so HA is centered at A and goes to the edge at H, that is a radius. Um, CE, so here's CE. E is not to center, uh, or is not a center and it's not on the edge. So here would be the edge, like C would have to go all the way out to here, not stop at E, then it would be a radius of this circle. So E, C to E is not a radius. So this would be no. Um, C to D, so C to D goes all the way down here, definitely not a radius. B, D, oops. So here's B, D. So B is a center, D is on the edge of that circle, so this one is good. And then B, F, so B is the center, F is on the edge of that circle, so that is a radius, and that one would be the same length as well.